This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. Indeed seem a wonder. Soren stared at the hole that now began to split into two or three cracks. The egg shuddered slightly, and the cracks grew longer and wider. He had done this himself just two weeks ago. This was exciting. What happened to my egg tooth, Mum? It dropped off, stupid, Clarda said. Oh, Soren said quietly. His parents were so absorbed in the hatching that they didn't reprimand Clud for his rudeness. Where's Mrs. P? Mrs. P? His mother said urgently. Right here, ma'am. Mrs. Pithifer, the old blind snake, who had been with the Owl family for years and years, slithered into the hollow. Blind snakes, born without eyes, served as nest maids, and were kept by many owls to make sure the nests were clean and free of maggots and various insects that found their way into the hollows. Mrs. P., no maggots or vermin in that corner where Noctus put in fresh down. Course not, ma'am. Now, how many broods of owlets have I been through with you? Oh, sorry, Mrs. P., how could I have ever doubted you? I'm always nervous at the hatching. Each one is just like the first time. I never get used to it. Don't you apologize, ma'am. You think any other birds would care two wits if their nest was clean? The stories I've heard about seagulls. Oh, my goodness. Well, I won't even go into it. Blind snakes prided themselves on working for owls, whom they considered the noblest of birds. Meticulous. The blind snakes had great disdain for other birds that they felt were less clean due to their unfortunate digestive processes that caused them to eliminate only sloppy wet droppings instead of nice neat bundles, the pellets that owls yarped or spit up. Although owls did digest the soft parts of their food in a manner similar to other birds and indeed passed it in a liquid form, for some reason they were never associated with these lesser digestive processes. All the fur and bones and tiny teeth of their prey, like mice, that could not be digested in the ordinary way, were pressed into little pellets just the shape and size of the owl's gizzard. Several hours after eating, the owls would yarp them up. Wet poopers is how many nest-made snakes referred to other birds. Of course, Mrs. Plithifer was much too proper to use such coarse language. Mum! Soren gasped. Look at that! The nest suddenly seemed to reverberate with a huge cracking sound. Again, only huge to the ear slits of barn owls. Now the egg split. A pale, slimy blob flopped out. It's a girl! A long shree call streamed from his mother's throat. It was the shree of pure happiness. Adorable, Soren's mother sighed. Enchanting, said Soren's father. Clud yawned, and Soren stared dumbfounded at the wet, naked thing with its huge, bulging eyes sealed tightly shut. What's wrong with her head, Mum? Soren asked. Nothing, dear. Chicks just have very large heads. It takes a while for their bodies to catch up. Not to mention their brains, Clud muttered. So they can't hold their heads up right away, said his mother. You were the same way. What shall we call the little dear? Soren's father asked. Eglantine. Soren's mother replied immediately. I have always wanted a little Eglantine. Ooh, Mum, I love that name, Soren said. He softly repeated the name. Then he tipped toward the little pulsing mass of white. Eglantine, he whispered softly. 
and he thought he saw one little sealed eye open just a slit and a tiny voice.